Good morning, Harrisburg families. My name is Susan Sneath. I am the Chief Academic Officer here in Harrisburg, and I created a very brief um, resource for you to use as you are coaching your children while they are learning at home. This is super simple, and we are really excited to share it with you. Unfortunately, we're not back in the classrooms quite yet. We are only going to have our students back in the classroom when we know that we can keep them safe. Um, but we have done a lot of work over the last couple of weeks to make sure that we create virtual classrooms that make as much sense to our students as our regular classrooms. So we know that every child probably needs some oversight at home about their learning in this environment. So a couple resources just to help you think about best ways to assist your children in connecting with their teachers through their devices. I'm going to call parents the learning coach. The learning coach at home could be a older sibling, it could be a grandparent, aunt, uncle, guardian, or mom or dad. And what we're um, what we are talking about right now is our option A, which is remote learning at home, where your children are going to have a full day of school and they will have synchronous meetings, which means they'll have interactive meetings over Zoom and over Google Classroom while they can talk with their teacher online and they can talk with their classmates online. And then there will be periods in the day where we're asking them to work asynchronously, which means that they're going to be logging into certain practice, um, practice software and doing assignments offline to present to their teachers later. All students in the 2021 school year, K through 12, pre-K through 12, will begin school remotely for the 2021 school year. Um, I would like to just make you aware that even children who are in high school could, could use some adult oversight when it comes to learning at home. Our goal is to provide all of the tips necessary to help our kids to be as successful as possible. Um, every child by now should have received devices from the school district. If your family is having trouble making sure that you have reliable internet, in your home, I'm requesting that you contact your child's school principal to have that discussion about what can be done to help. Our priority focus in Harrisburg School District at this time is to ensure that every one of our children has access to their education. The platform that we are using for our virtual classrooms is called Google Classroom. On this slide, I have given you step-by-step -step direct directions on how to assist your child in learning how to sign up and go into their virtual classroom. Your child, children in grades K through eight received a Chromebook and children in ninth through 12th grade have received a personal computer. Um, in all grades, this method of signing up for their Google Classroom is the same. So in your packet, when you received your device, your child was provided with a student ID number. When you are ready to log into your computer, you will put your child's student ID number, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, at hbgsd.k12.pa.us. The computer will prompt your child to create their own personal password. Um, make that password something that your child will remember and that's relatively easy for them to type in all the time. And please, please remind your children never to share their passwords with other kids. This is their personal password. This is their personal device to their education. Um, here's some coaching hints. Students need to become as self-sufficient in logging into their computer as soon as possible. I think in the beginning you'll feel some urgency because children are supposed to be logged in to their Google Classroom on time each day. And some children will 
sort of struggle and you're going to have the tendency to want to sign in for them. Our goal is to help them practice so that they can sign in themselves and be as independent as possible. Of course, our younger children may need more assistance, but even our younger children, we have high expectations for what they're going to be able to do. So once they find all the keys where their numbers are, and once, once they find hbgsd.k12.pa.us, they can enter their password each time, log into their computer, and find their Google Classroom. When, you, when you're logged into your computer, um, there will be an icon for a Google app. So you're going to press that button. And then you're going to look for, I'm going to call it the waffle. So when you see this screen on your child's computer, up in this corner, there's this little walk, like, well, we're going to call it a waffle. We want you to click on that. When you click on that, um, this, this will always be found in the upper right corner of the Google page. There will be a drop down that comes down from the waffle. And we're, look, we're asking you to find this icon, which is the Google Classroom icon. Here it is enlarged. Once you click on that, you will see your child's classroom. So it could be Ms. Simmons over at Downey, it can be any one of these teachers, but the Google Classroom icon will look just like this. Click on your child. Your child will, if they're in elementary school, they'll probably only have one icon, but if they're in middle school or high school, they have multiple teachers, so they have multiple classrooms. So they can click to accept the invitation to all of their teacher, teacher classrooms, and log into their advisory period right at the beginning of the day. Once in Google Classroom, there will be a schedule for your child's day. There will be links to have meetings with their teachers. There will be links to independent work that the child needs to do during the day. There will be links to your morning meeting each morning. This is where daily attendance will be taken each morning. This is the special teacher through, for all of our pre-K through 12th grade students, that your child will be welcome to school each day by this one teacher every single day. In, um, in elementary school, it's their classroom teacher. But in grades five through nine, morning meeting is their mentor or what they call their advisory period. And the teacher is out there to kind of build a community and to mentor your child through this remote learning experience. During the morning meeting, your child will interact with, live with his or her teacher and with the students in the advisory class. It's really important that when children are in a classroom that we build a classroom community where children feel safe to um, ask questions and guess at answers and make mistakes without being afraid of being criticized. We, our teachers, have been working on tactics to make sure that they build a virtual classroom community. And the first classroom community that your child will experience is their morning meeting or their advisory period or their cougar period or their mentoring period. Um, but that all will be linked through that Google Classroom that we talked about earlier. The classroom culture is never the same when somebody's missing from the group. It is super important that your children take this first day of school on Monday, August 31st, and treat it like they're getting up, getting ready to go out of their house and go directly to their school. Um, instead, they're waking up in the morning, they're getting ready, they need to eat a good breakfast, get dressed, and they have to have their computer in front of them connected. We want to make sure the computer is always charged or the cord is nearby, and they need to sign into school on time each day. The elementary school day begins at 8.50. 
please allow your child some time, about five minutes before each time they're supposed to log in. So at 8.47, we would want our elementary children to log into their computers and wait to join their morning meeting. The beginning of the middle level day is um, 8.10 in the morning, and our high schoolers have to get up super early, and the beginning of their day is at 7.30. For children who are kind of new to school, I'm really asking that you consider giving them directions in small chunks and then really rewarding them when they do exactly what you ask them to do. You can do this with little stickers or um, of course you can do it with praise. You can do it with a stamper on their hand or smiley faces on a chart. Children can become, younger children can, can become pretty antsy when they're working on the computer for a long period of time. Your child's teacher will be very encouraging and very understanding that we have to build up their stamina to work online. But we also need to understand that children just can't sit in for long periods of time without having multiple breaks. Your teacher will be providing special breaks for all of our students, even adults need to get up and move around. So you will see your, te your child's teacher implement multiple strategies um, to give your children breaks, to reinforce them when they're doing what they need to do, um, and really trying to help them become more independent and to increase their stamina so that they can persevere through challenging tasks. One of the things that you can do as a learning coach at home to help the teacher help your child is to every few minutes, make sure that you're showing your own child or your own student that you're the coach for how proud you are of their stamina and how proud you are of the work that they're doing. Um, sometimes little, little tiny um, reinforcement systems can help a lot in this regard, especially with younger children. So this picture is the picture of a grid and it has 16 boxes in it. It can be made really simply on a piece of paper. And what can happen is you can really like make this a visual score sheet for your child. You can use a marker or a sticker or a stamper to put a happy face in each of the um, blocks. And when your child is doing a really good job doing school in this remote way, when the child, for example, finishes all, gets a, a point in each of their boxes, maybe there's some kind of special prize at home or a special privilege that your child has earned. Anything that we can do to encourage and let children know that they're doing what is needed to be done, we really want to make sure that they know how proud we are of them. Your teachers will be doing that online, but it also might be helpful for you to do it at home as a learning coach as well. Another thing that really could be used as a special reward or a privilege is one of these go noodle or brain breaks for children. They are right online. They are available for parents. You can sign up and get your own free um, account with go noodle. And they're simply um, little breaks um, that are intended just for little young children to give them opportunities to move and sing and dance. I'm gonna show you a super quick one, um, just so you can see what we're talking about here. Allowing your children to sing and dance and move just for a few minutes between learning is a really good way to build up their perseverance. There are all kinds of brain breaks that, um, that I provided for you on this. So um, there's brain breaks for older children as well. So there's just little games and little movement and games that uh, ask kids to clap. This is one that's for older children. Open your eyes and draw a picture out of your squiggly line. First, point your right index finger to your left fist. 
At the same time, raise your left thumb and then you alternate your fingers. Brain breaks like these help kids stay focused after being seated for long periods of time. In this brain break, you put your hands out in front of you with your palms facing away from you while your fingers are pointing up. Start by waving your right hand in front of you, left to right. Now, have your left hand in front of you, waving it up and, and down. And you can see, that's, that, those brain breaks are intended for older kids. They're, they take just a few minutes, and they're just an opportunity for your child to rest and relax and then build their perseverance so that they can continue the hard job of learning. Some things that might be really hard to resist for the learning coach at home, it is so much easier sometimes just to do it for the child. If it's 8.49 or 8.49 in the morning and your elementary child is kind of going very slowly and not remembering where the right keys are and um, maybe just kind of lagging along and sleepy in the morning and the coach might very well want might want to go on there and just do it for them um, it is really important that we allow our children and let our children know that we believe in them and we believe that they can do certain tasks and we want to make sure that they have plenty of time to do them and we want them to do it independently. While the classroom um, meetings are happening, you may, you as a parent might want to ask the teacher questions. But what I'm asking you to do is please don't interrupt the learning at that time. Asking questions like that on behalf of the child, um, we really want our kids to ask questions. So you can whisper in your child's ear and say, you know, make sure you let your teacher know that you don't understand this but we really want to develop that relationship between your child and his or her teacher. And you might be really, really, really trying to resist giving your child the right answer or nudging your child towards the right answer. Mistakes are part of learning. We want them to get the wrong answer sometimes because that's what helps them learn. So try, try, try not to nudge them toward the right answer. Let them work it through, let them learn how to learn in this incredibly different remote setting. You may be really anxious to talk to your teacher, your child's teacher right then and there on the computer to tell the teacher what your child is struggling with. I encourage you not to have that conversation while the teacher has other children. Your child's educational information is super private. Um, what you can do is put a note in the chat or send an email to your child's teacher and let your, te your child's teacher know that you'd like to have a private conversation with them about your child and some of the things that your child is struggling with. You might be worried that your child is not being independent enough yet or you're not confident that you know what to do to help your child learn. Parents, you are your child's first teacher. You know, you know your children the very best. Um, any support that you can give us in this unusual environment to just make sure your children know how important their education is and how proud we are of them and how competent your children are, we really believe that we can provide excellent instruction in this remote way. And we really can't wait to see our children back in our schools once again. Don't worry, parents. Any support you can give us is great. We are super, super grateful. We are super grateful to how supportive our families have been. We are super grateful for how patient our children have been and for how independent our children have become. We are doing our best to navigate this unchartered territory. Now, in the fall, it's time to make sure that school looks like school, that we are measuring your child's learning. It's not going to look the same as it did in the spring when we were unprepared and never expected to close for as long as we did, but now we are prepared. And now we are asking you to support as your child's learning coach 
the remote learning environment until we can get our children safely back into the classrooms. We wish you well during the 2021 school year. Please make sure you're communicative with your child's teacher. Make sure that you do it privately outside of the meetings and let your, let your teachers know what you're um, struggling with as a parent um, to help your child be successful in this remote setting. We see you as our partners. We appreciate hearing from you, whether it's something that you're concerned about or something that's positive. We really appreciate hearing from you. But I know that I've met with all of the teachers in Harrisburg School District over the last week. They are so excited to finally be connected with students again this fall. So we will see you all for the first day of school on August 31st. Thank you so much and have a wonderful weekend.